the Art and Industry of Business and Living podcast, discussing conscious choices around business, money, life and living and creating a greater future for you and the planet. Hi, everybody. It's Gary. Hey, everybody. And Simone. How does it get any better than this? So welcome to my podcast. I'm sure you've been on here before. And we've got Gary Douglas, who is the founder of Access Consciousness. And I've been so incredibly lucky to be working with this amazing man for the past uh, 18 years, I think it is. So I have learned. That's a long time, Simone. So, it is a long time. It's nearly two decades. Wow. <laughs> so... I must have started when I was 10. There you go. That's it. <laughs> I don't look old. You know, and I, and exactly. I, was, always de- I was always decadent, so it was fine. Exactly. <laughs> so one of the things I wanted to talk to you today about, Gary, is you have a telecall coming up, and it's called Beyond the Stereotype. And yeah. if we look at, you know, stereotypes, I mean, I looked up the, you know, what, the, what Google says. Stereotype is a fixed general image or set of characteristics that a lot of people believe represent a particular type of person or thing. So if someone is stereotyped as something, people form a fixed general idea or image of them so that it is assumed that they will behave in a particular way. So what is uh, one of the things that you that we put down on the description, the only description was yes or no. Can you tell me more about that, the yes or no with Beyond the well, Stereotype? Well, basically what it boils down to is that, like, if you decide you have to be the perfect mother, then you will judge yourself nonstop to see where you're not perfect or how you are perfect. You won't actually see what you're accomplishing. And as a result, you cannot create the future that you'd like to have. You know, it's like I've watched my daughter worry about, you know, her oldest son's father who keeps trying to take him away from her because he's decided she's a bad mother. Now, the stereotype for him is she's a bad mother. So he's always trying to prove that she's a bad mother. So everything she does, he tries to put in the category that equals bad mother so he can use it as a weapon against her. And she worries about it, and she thinks about it, and she thinks, oh, my God, maybe I am a bad mother. And I look at this kid, and he's kind, and he's generous, and he's, you know, sweet. He's kind to little kids, and he's kind to old people, and he's kind to, you know, it's like he has a kindness that his father doesn't have, and the only way he got it is from his mother. But no matter how much I tell her that, she doesn't get it, because it doesn't fit the stereotype of the perfect mother or the bad mother. So stereotype is basically a judgment. Yes. Stereotyping is always so a judgment looking- about what you will all want to appear to be that you're not or how you want to appear to not be something you are. So one of the things you just mentioned, too, is about creating the future. So yes. how, like how much do you need to, like creating the future, it's like what I get and sort of and working with you for so many years and with Access Consciousness Tools, it's like, Functioning from no judgment, functioning from no stereotype, and from awareness is more about how you create the future. Can you well, that's talk about that? the door to creating the future. Judgments close the door to creating a future. Perfect. So what kind of future would you like to see? You know, do you want this future to be what it currently is, or do you want it to be something different? How do you create something the difference? Different. You create the difference by choosing different possibilities. What's actually possible you haven't considered. So what is actually possible that we haven't considered? Well, it's like we look at the world as, okay, so right now it's like because of having shingles, I've been home for like six friggin' months watching television. And the only good thing about watching television is I get to see the commercials about how they're trying to create the future of the world. And the source of Mm -hmm. creation of the future of the world is all about how it's artificial intelligence and how the savior of mankind is going to be artificial intelligence. The interesting thing is, you know, it's like in in the Greek days, they had deus ex machina. God would come down out of the machine, and literally they had machines that they had somebody in that they would lower in and the God would arrive on planet Earth and change everything. And it's like we keep looking for the deus ex machina, 
whether it's the UFOs or whether it's, you know, the alienation or whether it's, you know, the right answer. All of those are the God out of a machine that's supposed to create everything as being perfect or being right, finally. But even that stereotype of the perfect life, the perfect rightness, the perfect way to do things is a stereotype. What if nothing was perfect and everything was just a choice? What could yes, one create like if that, that were the case? Yeah. And so much of that of what you're talking about, I see, is that where people put things outside of themselves rather than knowing that they can be, they are the source of creation, that they are well, the ones most, that get to choose. Yes, but the thing is that if you keep looking for the deus ex, ex machina in your life, the God from a machine, if you keep looking for that, you look at it in your phone, you look at it in your TV, you look at it in your computer. You're always looking for where the God source will actually give you information it will change your life and change everything that's going to happen. And so, and that's probably the biggest mistake we all make because we're looking for the perfect answer, the perfect situation, the perfect life, the perfect relationship. And it's like, I mean, I just think it's so amusing to me. I can watch reality shows for about seven minutes max. And it's like, <laughs> and then I just go, really? Anybody would care about this enough to watch these people? I cannot believe that they actually pay money to have commercials on these channels because people watch them. And what kind of people watch them? I know. But, but you know what, Gary? I'm going to say every now and then when I have something like that on in the background, there's this energy that gets you sucked in. And then all of a sudden I'm like, what the hell am I doing? It's like I'm watching this and it's it's it is a reality TV show. But it's like how much of that is you know, the aligning and agreeing with the stereotypes and the judgments and the perfect, the perfection of the life that they're trying to create rather than actually what you, you can mean, choose. Other than all of it? Yeah, exactly. All that. If you have any processes, feel free to run any processes you have too. So what jails are you using to create the dominance of equals MC square to prove that if you function as a stereotype, you will become a stereotype. And as a stereotype, you will finally achieve perfection. Are you choosing? Everything that is sent to God's doing, we just trying to create it all. Right, wrong, good and bad. Pop and pot on nine shorts, boys and beyonds. That's a good nice. one. Except the only thing, we, have, we don't have an oracle, and that's not what I'm good at. <laughs> well, don't worry. I'm not going to run it again anyway. I'm just going to run it once so okay. people will begin to see it, Okay. And then we'll okay. have you know, we'll have the Oracle listen to it and then give it to us on our first option. Okay, that sounds good. I like that. Yeah. So so how much do people let's talk about like stereotype, you know, say with your body, your age, uh your well, sex, the perfect your sexuality. Stereotype. That's the perfect stereotype. Your body is stereotypically in, impelled into destruction. What? You know, as you more. get older, well, as you get older, you're supposed to be more feeble. You're supposed to be less able. You're supposed to be, you know, there's all the things you're not supposed to do and not supposed to be and not supposed to have and not supposed to generate. But that's true of teen, teenhood. That's true of every aspect of life and living. It's like if we function from the stereotypical, you know, you're getting older, that means mm -hmm. all your skin is supposed to sag and drag and you're supposed to look like crap. Okay, so then what's some of the what's some tools that we can do to start to change that? Because I just turned fifty. It's so funny, and I I'm, I'm um I feel great. Like I'm I'm the happiest I've been in a hell of a like you know not that I wasn't happy, but I'm like I'm getting happier and happier. It's like my body is getting like yummier and yummier. It's yeah. great. Everything's working. But you know what? That's, I do have a little bit of um. That's because that's you're getting what? ready to die. Because I'm getting ready to die. Yeah, you Tell have me. a burst of energy just before you die. Oh, Gary. <laughs> I'm kidding. But the stereotypical <laughs> thing is, it's like you're on the way down. Now it's going to be a slow, it's going to be a fast dive into incompetence. Now, you know, it's like yeah, I'm, 77. I'm not as incompetent as some of the people I know that are 37. Yep, I agree. Like, I've seen you riding horses every day in Costa Rica. Yeah. You know, it's like and working throughout the day. <laughs> yeah, 
I have a hard time getting on the horse these days, but once I'm on, I look great. <laughs> True story. Yeah. So it's like, yeah, I may be having more difficulty getting on. I may not be able to, like, bound on a horse the way I used to be able to, but I'm still in a position where I can create something and have something and do a different reality. I still like that. That works for me. So then how do you be with your body in beyond the stereotype with bodies? I go, okay, so what's really true here, not what do I think is true. And what you think is true is usually what you bought from somebody else. Mm-hmm. You know, I saw my mother. She decided that no one should live, live to be older than 81. She told mm-hmm. me this when she was 80. I said, are you trying to tell me something, Mom? Nope, nope, not saying anything. I said, okay. And it's like, and I realized that she started to get worse, but she went in for an operation to handle something. And they put her under anesthesia, and she never came back totally. She was always Hmm. continuously gone. But I discovered after the anesthesia that she'd been on Valium, 15 milligrams of Valium a day, for 38 years. Wow. Mother's little helper, they used to call it. Yeah. You know, it's like it's supposed yeah. to make your life easy. It's like take the edge off your life, have a Valium. <laughs> but it's like 38 years of it, it builds up in your bloodstream, it builds up in your fat cells, and it's like, and eventually, your you know your mind can't take it. And that's exactly so what she, happened to her. So her point of view was that no one should be older than 81, and that's pretty much what she created. Uh, yeah, she reached 82, and she died one month after. Wow. But she was trying so, to die for three months before she reached 82. Right. So then let's look at beyond the stereotype with money, with money flows. Well, I mean, How do you like see one that of the working? things I noticed is they have all these things about, you know, prepare for, you know, your death by having Medicare, prepare for your you know, not having any money because you won't have any money. So just know you're not going to have any money and, you know, go coupon clipping and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. It's amazing the stuff they show on TV about how you don't have to have money as you get older. Now, does that make sense to you? No. It doesn't to me. Not at all. Yeah, it's like, no. I enjoy money. I enjoy having money and I have a good time with it. So beyond the stereotype is, the way I'm hearing this too is more so about living from your choices, creating your future and asking for what it is that you would like to show up in your life and the world and the planet. Yes, exactly. So one of the things you referred to is yes, no. And I love this tool, Gary. It's one of my favorites. It's it was definitely not the easiest to learn because you do have to go beyond the stereotype. You have to go beyond judgment. You have to go beyond your limitations, your conclusions, where you think that you can work it out with the yes, no. Like in the yes, no universe is is basically asking a question. It's like you get yes, no. And not based on what you've decided is going to be the right, good, perfect, you know, answer. Well, it's based it's like, on what's actually yeah. going to create something greater. Most everybody is looking for what's going to give them the right answer. And it's like, and you've been mm-hmm. taught that from you. A little time, talking about stereotypes, you've been taught that you can only have the right answer. You cannot get the wrong mm-hmm. answer. If you get the wrong answer, you've destroyed your whole life. Now, that's one of the stereotypes most people live by, which is insane. So they're in constant judgment of themselves. Yes. And in the constant judgment, there's also a constant place where they cannot choose. And choice is the way you create your life. Got to choose in order to create. But they don't do that. So can you talk a little bit more about choice and the way you see choice? Because I see a lot of people in this reality too function from that place of like, well, I must judge it, then I can choose. Or I must wait for something to show up and then I I can choose rather than creating choice. It's more I have to consider it, I have to decide it, or I have to see what the best choice is, not what can I choose. And the thing is, I started doing the, you know, if you choose, if I choose this, what's my life going to be like in five years? If I don't choose it, what's my life going to be like in five years? Because the one thing that I discovered is 
if you function from that place of recognizing your choice does create what's the next five years going to be like, it's a whole different reality. And you start to see that, oh, if I choose this, a whole different thing is going to show up than what I think is going to show up. What would it be like if I allowed my life to be like that, where I, where everything that showed up, I was ready to deal with? Allow my life to be like that. Yeah. Yeah. So how much is allowance involved in this, Gary? Well, this is one of the most important aspects of all of this. You have to, to not live as a stereotype. You have to be in allowance of A, you can make mistakes. B, no mistake is good for longer than 10 seconds. C, I didn't really make a mistake. I just chose, you know, not the best choice. And D, it's like, okay, what can I actually choose? I got 10 seconds to choose the rest of my life. What can I choose? It would be, would change this. And look at how your choice can change things, not look at how your choice will make you right. So one of the things that I've noticed, Gary, with all the tools of access consciousness, I mean, the mantra of access is all of life comes to me with ease, joy, and glory, right? It's like yes. the good, the bad, yeah. and the ugly. And, yes, and most people would and, rather use the other uh, the other option, which is all of life comes to me with pain, suffering, and glory, so I can be real. Yeah, that's what I wanted to ask you about. It's like, because as you talk about this, it's like beyond the stereotype, it's like, why the fuck wouldn't you choose it? It's like, oh my goodness. Like coming out of judgment, not trying to get it right, not you're not going to the wrongness of you, or having no conclusions. It, what, what do you get that is that is such a hold on people to not choose something greater? Because, because they want to be like real. other people. They want to be accepted by others. As though somehow other people's reality is more valuable than their own. Wow. Ouch. Yes. Ouch so is right. decided that somebody else's reality is more valuable than yours. We destroy and create it. Right yeah. now, good and bad. Pock and potter, all nine shorts, boys and beyonds. And that has been a huge gift to me, Gary. What you access consciousness tools over the past 18 years, it's like, you know, for whatever reason, I should have been able to choose it overnight, but it's like it takes some time in all the different areas that we have, money, business, body, sex, relationships. It's like all of it that beginning to actually see that I do have value. It's, yeah, but I'm the so thing is, you were, never, were you ever taught that you had value when you were little? Or were you I'm taught gonna say, you always managed to choose wrong? My dad allowed me to choose and said he would always, like he always sort of had my back. He was, he would always, he was always like, Simone, you, get, you choose. You choose what, what it is you want with your life. I will be here for you. It was almost like a... You know, like if you're going to jump off something, I always knew that he would be there with open arms ready to catch me if I fell. That's, that was the energy yeah. I grew up with from him. With my mother, completely different. It's like that was, you know, I was always wrong. Every choice I made was, you know, I was accused of either arguing choice. against her, fighting her, a wrong yeah. choice. Yeah. yeah. Well, the funny part about so, yeah. me is there's so many people that grow up with parents like that. You know, I was lucky I didn't. My dad always said, you could do anything you want to, Gary, but don't do that, don't do that, don't do that, don't do that. <laughs> Why not? Because right. those aren't the good things to choose. It's better to choose this, this, right. and this. And I go, well, I don't want to. Okay. I want to, I want to choose what you said not to. <laughs> good humanoid. Yes. And, of course, I always did. You know, mm-hmm. my mother said, well, honey, whatever you choose, I will still love you. Basically, what she was telling right. me is, no, no matter how crazy I was, she still loved me. Right. Yeah, you know, it's like ultimately, I think that's the way to make every relationship work. I don't care how crazy you are; I still love you. You gave me that tool when I was in a relationship with Brendan Watt to say that no matter how crazy you are, yeah. I still love you. It's brilliant because it's like it, it allows people to choose whatever they're choosing, but you don't have to buy into their point of view or their reality. It's like no. you still have you. And they don't have to fight you on trying to get them to recognize their reality and how good it is. And you don't have to fight against their reality to see how good it is or how bad it is. You just have to allow them to have their reality. And when you have that, it's like it's a whole different world. But so few people are willing to have it. Startling to me. The ultimate stereotype is that most people are wrong. This is the stereotype most people choose always. I am wrong. Or the other one right. is, how how wrong am I? 
right? How wrong can I be today? Yeah. What's my litany yeah. of judgment? Yeah. Yes. Depending on what day of the week it is. <laughs> it's Friday, so I must have 2,700 judgments because it's Friday. Yeah. Just well, Monday is usually about making... money and work. Yeah. Yes. Well, it's like Monday. You always go, oh, my God, I was so bad this weekend. I spent too much money. I didn't do things I should have, and I didn't complete any of the tasks I wanted to get done. Yeah, it's like, and if you started coming out of that constant state of judgment, it's like, what else could you create? I'm pretty sure yeah. we've spoken about this tool on this podcast, but I'm just going to reiterate it again. And one of my favorite questions and tools from Access Consciousness is, who does this belong to? And if you start using that tool for every single thought, feeling, and emotion that comes up for you, even when we're talking about this, or you know, if you find that you have that litany of judgment with your body, or with money, or your business, or your relationship, ask, who does this belong to? And if it lightens up, and when I say lightens up, I mean like the energy. It just like the energy gets lighter. It doesn't just do this like clunk, like this heaviness to it. It's not yours. Yeah. And, you know, 99% of your thoughts, feelings, and emotions aren't yours. And I'm, we're going to tell you the truth right now as well. It's like it's more than 99% that isn't yours. None of it's yours. So if you can even start to use that. I know, tool, but it's so, much, to, it's so much fun to, to lie and say it. So people is. can claim that 1%, that 1% of yeah. being fucked up. <laughs> yes. So, I still want to be fucked up, then I know I'm right, finally. The only time you, you know, know you're really funny. right is when you, know, when you find out you're actually wrong. Exactly. And how many of you out there are trying to prove that you're wrong so that you can prove that you're right, so that you can always be right in the wrongness that you are. And having a daddy is time to go see him where you destroy and uncreate it. You know, the first level two and three class that I went to with you, Gary, which is now the Choice of Possibilities, which Gary, Dane, uh, Brendan Watt, and myself facilitate around the world. You can look at it on accessconsciousness.com. And the first class I went to, you, we got a manual. You know, you, you were on stage talking for days. I had no idea what you were talking about. I was like, I don't even know what this man, you know, what the hell is going on? But I could perceived my whole life changing and everything like that like everything that I was like had held in place and had made so solid was loosening up is the best way I can describe it and there's one note that I wrote in my manual and I wrote I am not as fucked up as I think I am because I heard you say that and I was like I'll go with that I can start with that I'm not as fucked up as I think I am and then see good where starting place there. yeah well I thought it was a good starting place because what if you're not? It's like, what if you're not as fucked up as you think you are? And what if there's way more choice available and way more possibilities available? Oh, yeah, there is. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So you oh, yeah. have this telecall, and it is starting on, I'm just looking at actually, the prerequisites are actually choice of possibilities, which is a class I just spoke about, which you need to do the bars class, foundation, and choice of possibilities. And I know there's a bunch of listeners out there who have done that too. It actually starts on November the 18th. It's a three-series call, so 18th, 19th, and 20th, which I know Gary will be delving more into this. And if you have the courage to come on and actually start to, you know, create your life and, like, and create the future that you desire. Yeah. And if you want to be messed up so that you get to create more of your life, because I will mess you up. He will mess you up. He's messed me up for years, and I love it. Mess me up more. Yes. <laughs> most, most people go, do more, do more. Okay, good. Yeah. Well, but the one thing you know, I will thing, not Gary? do is tell you you're wrong because you're not. No. And, you know, the, one of the first things, the first seminar I ever went with you in Sydney, Australia, it was, uh, it was actually a seminar on relationships. And I didn't want to do a, a seminar on relationships, but I wanted to hear you talk. And then I realized sitting there that I went, wow, this is the first time in my life that somebody has not made me wrong for not desiring a relationship. So I ended up getting that piece out of it as well. But also one of my favorite things that you said, it was at a Mind, Body and Spirit Festival and everyone had the answer. You know, there was all these, like, if you don't have this, you're wrong. And it's like, you need this, like this, you know, this, this energy of you are lacking. And one of the things that you said in the class was, don't trust me, trust you. And I was like, oh, thank you. God, someone is not telling me to trust them. That line, I think, and what you said made me actually want to come back more to find out more because you started empowering me to realize that I actually know way more than what I've been willing to acknowledge. 
So what if you out there listening know way more than what you're willing to acknowledge? And what if you start well, you, trusting you, you and you your You do, choices? but but don't plan on that. Plan on being fucked up because it's way more. It's easy to be fucked up. Well, then you've got something to talk about with your friends, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, I'm still and it is coming up to Christmas. This is That's... going good. Exactly. Yeah. You can complain about it. Yeah. Drink it out. When in doubt, drink it out. <laughs> yep. That's one of our things we like to have. Yeah. So, Mr. Gary Douglas, is there anything else you want to add here before we... Yeah. Always know you need to do what's bad because when you're doing something bad, it's what you know you shouldn't do. When you're doing good is when you're giving up everything you'd like to do and everything you'd like to eat and everyone you'd like to eat to be good, to be right. <laughs> I adore you, Mr. Gary Douglas. Thank you so much for I coming on here. And if anyone wants to find out more about this telecall that Gary has coming up beyond the stereotype, you can find on accessconsciousness.com. Just go to classes and there's a link down there and you go to Gary's calendar. And uh, and there's a whole lot more out there too with thousands of facilitators all over the world. So you do not have to uh, choose anything less. There's always something greater yeah. possible. And you don't, desire. you don't have to do... You don't even have to do classes with me if you don't want it. You never have to. No. And there are a whole lot of people no. who don't want to because they think I'm too weird. And there are a whole lot of people you who are think too I'm weird. mean. You're, you're not mean. You're direct, is what I would I say. Some direct. of the most confronting conversations I've had with you that are in my face, and there's so much change, and it's like, oh! and then then it gets comfortable, and then it gets uncomfortable again. But you know what? It's like, bring it on. How much more change can I receive? It's like, let's do this. Yeah. Like, you see, you're the willing world to change and us. not everybody is. And that's a hard Thank place you. to live. Which one? The change or the not change? Yeah, it's like a, when you're willing to change and others aren't, that's a hard place to live. Uh, yeah, it is. To be in allowance of what people are not choosing and what they are choosing. Yeah. Yep. Exactly. Yeah. I adore you. Thank you so much for being here and being in thousands of people's lives. All right. So, thanks everyone. And we'll see you soon. Thank you much. Thank you. (laughs) Bye bye.